So, my dear brothers and sisters, many of you will have had the experience, maybe the unfortunate experience, of being in hospital. And the amazing and sometimes incredible things that doctors and nurses do, to be honest, mainly nurses, um, nurses are there in the thick of the battle and the thick of the bedpan and all of the kind of the ugly stuff that nurses have to do. You know, it's, it's a bit of, it can be a bit of a mess. And generally, see, you're in hospital because you're sick, so things aren't working the way they're supposed to. So nurses are the ones who come and, you know, <laughs> clean it all up, so to speak. Sorry to be I don't know, too graphic-like, but... Uh, but like they, they do, they do. Uh, that's what they do. They're qu- kind of amazing. Um, we have a nurse here uh, as part of our community this year, and she was working in a in oncology in a cancer ward, and just uh, just the, like telling us of what it's what it's like, you know. I mean, and you you have to you, well as a nurse you want to you should want to uh, preserve the dignity of the patient as much as you can, you know. <laughs> so so when you walk over and something oh you know something's after. Not going where it should have, or you know what I mean. Um, you don't, you don't embarrass the person. You know, you just try. To, oh, not a bother now. We'll, we'll get that sorted out. And you know, you try and preserve the person's dignity, because they're in a weakened state. Uh, they're in a weakened state. They might be quite ill, or or or, or in pain, or whatever it might be. Uh, just over the last two days, over the last three days actually, up in Dublin, the, over the last couple of days that we've had the. Divine Mercy Conference, and when priests go up there, or whenever you go to a, a, a bigger kind of faith event, and you're hearing confessions there, you're kind of like a, a, a doctor or a nurse of the soul. You get to see the worst of people. You know, the first time you talk to someone, they're telling you all the worst stuff they've ever done. You know, it's, it's a very interesting way to meet someone. Because <laughs> it's you know, bless me, Father, for I've sinned. I'm shocking. I'm awful. Oh, lads, I swear, what I've done now, I've, I've stolen, I've kicked, and I've screamed, and I've gouged, and I've looked at all sorts of stuff. And, you know, that's the, the first time you meet them. That's, I'm sure it's kind of similar, you know, with, with, for a nurse. The first time you meet a person, they could be in great need of cleaning. Uh, and, yeah, so it's... It, it, there's something very, from a priest's perspective, something very humbling for us about a person being so honest and trusting and vulnerable so quickly. Now, not everyone is good at it, and especially us, us, us Irish need to, at times need a bit, of, a bit of coaxing to actually give the, the real confession. Um, I've told this story before, but uh, a bishop I was talking to once just described how he had heard a confession that week, and he said... Us Irish, he said, we're not, we're not great at confession. He said, uh, he said, this lady came in and she said, um, she was behind the grill. And she said, bless me, Father, for I've sinned. Uh, I was late for Mass. Uh, I didn't say my prayers and I was disobedient. That's all, Father. And you could guess by her voice, she wasn't exactly the m- most springy of chickens. Uh, so he said, um, can I ask, uh, how, how old are you? I'm 87, Father. Right. Okay. You said you... you um, you kicked your sister, was it? Yes, Father. And, and when exactly did this happen? Um, 80, 82 years ago, Father. And have you confessed this sin before? Every time, Father. Now, if, if you've confessed it once, it, it's, it's really enough. So that, one, that one's gone. You're, you're good. You're good. You don't need to confess that one. Um, you said you were late for Mass. Yes, Father. Um, it was just a very, very cold morning. There was ice on, black ice on the roads. It was lethal, right? The way it creeps up on you. Uh, and we, we could have died. So, so I got a lift, but we were, we were late coming because it was, it, was, it was slow going on the ice. So you, so, oh, you, were just, so you were late from us because of the weather? Yes, Father. That's not actually a sin because you were aiming to get to Mass on time. You did nothing wrong. In fact, if anything, you were very brave in, 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 in facing those elements and coming. So that's... That actually is in. You're, you're good to go. Um, disobedient, you said. Uh, who were you disobedient to? Oh, I don't know, Father. I just I think ever since my first confession, I've just always thrown that one in, you know? So you weren't actually disobedient? Well, well, well I suppose I not really. Not, not really, Father. I suppose not. Okay, how are, um, how are things in your family? Oh, sure, they're all right, I suppose. You know, get on fine. 
most people, most people except my, my sister. We haven't spoken since 1964. <laughs> oh, all right. And now begins the confession. You know what I mean? Sometimes we Irish, we, 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 we I don't know, we, we identify some sins that we just always confess whether we actually committed, committed them or not. But then the real ones, the, these burning sins that are really dragging us down, uh, we, we tend not to bring to the Lord. I mean, we're, I don't know, afraid of shocking the priest. Or, sure. I think, Father, my, for today or myself, I think within, within about 18 months of ordination, you've heard every sin. The only one I haven't heard yet is cannibalism. Um, and if I were to hear the confessions of those here, nah, maybe. Uh, but uh, cannibalism is probably the, only, the only, only sin I've never heard. So, like, we get used to it. And it's a wonderful thing. It's a stunning thing that a person can meet you and, as I say, in their first conversation, be so honest about the mess of their hearts. And see, like, the, the Lord, the Lord honours that because if, if I'm bringing my heart as it is, warts and all, to the Lord, then he can do a lot with it. Whereas if I'm bringing a kind of a, um, a shielded version, a kind of a whitewashed version of my heart and kind of half revealing it to the Lord, then you're not really letting him work. You're not, it's not that he doesn't want to help or can't help, but you're not letting him help. You know, so calling the sin out, naming it, and naming especially, if we can at all, the root of that sin. So as opposed to just saying, you know, I, I get drunk a lot. Okay, why? Why are you drinking? What are you trying to numb? What are you trying to escape from? What do you think drink gives you? What does drink give you that the Lord can't or the Lord doesn't? Or what do you go to, to, to the bottle for that you don't go to the chapel for? Like, what's, what's the root? What's behind it? If you're trying to forget something or numb yourself, well, drink is never going to work. Get to the root, but bring that to the Lord, and then we might start to see some improvement. So, getting to the, to, to the roots of our sin. See, that's why this time of Lent, prayer, fasting, almsgiving, this time of repentance and simplifying our lives, maybe pushing out some of the distractions and creating a little more time, less time on the phone, less time on, on TV, less time eating between meals, uh, all of that, uh, we, we, we gain more time, which we're supposed to fill with the Lord. So I'm spending more time with him, hopefully I'll become aware of, of the state of my heart, uh, the state of my woundedness, the state of my sins. And then bringing that to the Lord honestly, it's such a healing gift. The Lord wishes to heal us, the Lord wishes to set us free. The Lord does not want to remind us of our sins. He does not remind us of our sins. Once they're confessed, they're gone. They're gone, end of story. They're thrown in the lake of his most precious blood and a sign is put up beside it, no fishing. They're gone. Stop pulling them back out. They're gone. Just leave them. And then we, 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 we draw from, from the, the Lord's grace, the Lord's forgiveness, the Lord's love, the Lord's healing constantly. And it's just a, it's, it's an amazing place to be. So, so I would have heard... I'm not sure it said so much. It probably is still said now. So I don't hang out with those people anymore. But, but like that, the, the back in the day, that the church spoke a lot about sin in order to control people. No, it spoke a lot about sin because people sinned. In the same way that Gardaí speak a lot about you know breaking the speed limits because people break the speed limits, and you know those who work for tax and tax office will complain that people aren't paying their taxes because people aren't paying their taxes. It's not to make people feel guilty. It's to run the system. And in the church, sin is a reality. And the church is composed of sinners. So yes, we do talk about sin. To control people? Nope. But to offer them the remedy. I mean, imagine, imagine like someone coming to you who's quite ill, and you tell, I sure you're grand. Look, you're fine. You're fine. A friend of mine I used to play GA in, back in Thurlis, and um, uh, at the lower levels of the sport, like Junior B and that, uh, whenever you get an old crack of a hurley in the shin or across the face, they give you a spray of the magic water. It's just water. You know, spray the water. You're grand, come on, off you go, come on. <laughs> right? And you're back out on the pitch like you just got a splash of water. Right, you know, so, but it's the... <laughs> so, <clears throat> telling people <clears throat> they're grand when they're clearly not is not beneficial. Telling people that their soul is fine when it clearly isn't is not beneficial. Like, you're not helping them. If some person comes to you diagnosed with cancer, ah, be grand, walk it off. That's just blatantly irresponsible. Like that's, you can't do that. That's, that, that. that's insanity. So telling someone like that, you know, your, your soul is fine when it's not, especially if you're a priest, like I'm responsible for that before God. 
no, obviously, with, with all the due compassion and, and, and understanding uh, and, and on, like, the reverence for, for the person and for their situation, yes, but along, all, with, with all, along with all of that, the truth. The truth, because we want to get to heaven. So pruning these things out of our lives, it's, it's a good thing. Pruning these thorns out and pruning these, these infected branches and tendencies out of our lives, that's a good thing. Not exactly pleasant always, but a good thing. So the church speaks about sin because sin is real. Turn on the news. You don't even have to look as far as the news. Look into the depths of your own heart. Are we saints? Because if we're not sinning, then we're saints. So are you ready to be up there now, up on a wee pedestal there with St. Joseph? We'll take St. Joseph down now and we'll put Bridie up there. Right? <laughs> like, our, if, if we've got no sin and we're all good, then yeah, you're, you're up there with them. Do you believe you are? Most people say, oh, Jean, Jean, no, stop. And you're probably right. So it's just about being honest. It's about, it's about being honest, Lord, I... I need you, and because I need you, I need your forgiveness, I go to confession. It's very simple. It's not a sacrament of guilt, it's the antidote to guilt. It's a sacrament of healing. We don't go to the doctor so that he'll make us feel bad by telling us there's something wrong with us. We go to the doctor as we want to know the truth. Is there something wrong or not? Because if I know what's wrong, then we've got a diagnosis, now we can start to work on it. We go to confession because if there's a problem, let's get healed of it, and if there's something wrong, let's, let's look into it and see where we can where we can get healing. So it's a good thing. It's a great thing. Confession is such, such a gift. Such a gift. Integrity, Lord, is yours. Ours the look of shame we wear today. We, the people of Judah, the citizens of Jerusalem, the whole of Israel from near and far away, in every country to which you have dispersed us, because of the treason we committed against you, to us, Lord, the look of shame belongs because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God, mercy and pardon belong because we have betrayed him. We have not listened to the voice of the Lord our God nor followed the laws he has given us through his servants, the prophets. So spoke the prophet Daniel in our reading today. The Lord wishes to heal us. We have sinned, but the Lord died on a cross to forgive us. So let's come to him, confident in his love and mercy.